students and welcome to Fiber Bound. My name is Ellie and I thought I would record a bit of a week of making vlog this week. I am working on some really fun projects right now and I'm going to be casting on a new one today and I figure this will be a great opportunity to show you how I fit making into my day. This is predominantly a knitting podcast and I post a lot of podcast videos uh, but today, obviously, it will be a vlog style. My plan is to record a little snippet here and there throughout this week. Shorty's walking through the house, so if you can hear some footsteps, that's him. Uh, but basically, I am working on some very exciting projects right now. I have a sweater on the needles that I cannot put down. I have some socks I am working on, one of which has a deadline, and a hat that also has a deadline of next well, this coming week. So I guess I thought it would be fun to record my progress throughout the week, record how I fit my knitting in around the day-to-day -day responsibilities that we all have. It might be fun to set some goals and see if I can actually reach those goals this week around life. If you like this kind of video, please like this video. It really helps my channel and it helps other people like you to be able to see this content as well. I really appreciate your support in liking this video. And if you're new here, please think about subscribing. I try to post something at least once a month. Occasionally, I am able to do two things a month. I do love to knit. I crochet a little bit. Right now, there's no crochet projects on my hooks. But occasionally I pick up the crochet, I do a tiny bit of sewing, really wish I had more hours in the day to do all the things that I want to do. But I am looking forward to sharing this week with you. I would love to be sitting in my little knitting spot there right now. I would love to be knitting on my projects, but I do have some errands that I need to run this morning. I need to go do some grocery shopping. I need to get my nails done. It's a personal errand, but it is one that I do quite enjoy. It's a little bit of pampering for myself once every four weeks or so. So that will be nice. I just need to choose a color. I've gone a bit of a darker wintry color. Might not look so dark on the screen recently, but even though it's a very dreary day out there today, we have had a taste of spring in the air in the last few weeks. So I'm wondering whether I embrace the spring vibes that are coming they are coming so close you can smell spring in the air it's amazing so i will share some snippets with you of the day i will share my projects with you i can't wait to share my new cast on with you as well and at the end of the week i will also be announcing some winners of the use your sock yarn now and that is a knit along that i am running on instagram it's a year-long knit along and it encourages you to use that sock yarn that you have, whether it's been in your stash for a week or five years. <laughs> Some of my stuff has been there a while. Uh, feel free to use that hashtag if you're working on any projects using sock yarn. Sock yarn can be anything you want it to be. I'll pop a link to the uh, Google form that we're using for finished objects that are finished within the month as well as um, the information that's on that Google form that sort of talks about the parameters of the knit along. But it's just a bit of fun, just a bit of an opportunity to think about using the yarn that you have. And I am quite open for you to buy yarn and use that too, and use this as an inspiration, because I think sock yarn is so versatile. You don't just have to make socks with sock yarn. I've made plenty of other things with sock yarn. I've made sweaters, shawls, hats. So yeah, um, I will be announcing that at the end of this week. And my plan is, because I'm working all week as well, my plan is to actually release this as one week episode. So join me in this video as I take you through my making week. And I hope that it inspires you a little bit. I hope that it can show you how you can fit it into your day if you're struggling to fit knitting in. I do try to fit it in as much as I can. And yeah, I'm going to have some breakfast now, check on the chickens, go do the grocery shopping, and then hopefully knit the afternoon away. That's the plan. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Look at 
trying to put these eggs away, but the carton won't close. So I'm really interested to see how heavy this one is. So let's weigh, let's weigh a standard one. That's the size difference. Crazy. A standard one, yeah, usually about the 60 grams, 58 grams for that one. 92 grams. Goodness gracious. It's the afternoon now, and I just found a sixth egg in the coop. And the girls are having a little bok bok around. A bit of freedom. They love it out here. While we're out here, I thought I'd show you what our plum tree is looking like at the moment, because I'm expecting it to bud or blossom any day now. There's already a couple of tiny ones happening right there. And I suspect this will be full of blossom by the end of this week. I hope. day is disappearing so fast. It's already 5 p.m. <laughs> I've got dinner on. It started, it's in the slow cooker, but I have had it on for a little while now. Uh, so now it's finally time to wind my yarn. I'm so excited. I will be knitting the Alma cardigan. I'll be casting it on today. It is a pattern by Sanna & Co or Susanna Kartanen. I have talked about this in my podcast. I bought the yarn at Bendigo. So I talk about the haul in my Bendigo video if you want to check that out. And I ended up getting a couple of extra skeins. I might flip the camera around and I'll show you the actual kit properly. So when I was in Bendigo, I picked up this as the main color and this was the contrast color. It was a kit that Louis and Lola had available in their store there that they were uh, promoting this pattern in with Susanna. Susanna uh, is an amazing designer and she has released some beautiful patterns over the years. And this was her 2024 release that was being promoted heavily <laughs> at the Wolf Show this year. So this is the kit that I picked up. But then a couple of days later, a week later, maybe once I got home, I realized that Karina, who was the dyer behind Louie and Lola, had released kits that looked like this. And I love the tones of this. The tones may not be coming up properly in this light. It is getting very dark now. But um, this one is called Rose Dust. And this one is Chai, I believe. And then the last contrast color, which was the original, I think it's natural. Yep, that's right. And the main color is called Pinot. So these are Merino Possum DK yarns. <laughs> They're 80% Merino, 20% Possum fur, 248 meters or 271 yards in 100 grams. They are non-superwash, so they will be my first garment in non-superwash yarn that I will knit and I am so excited about this and the other thing that excites me a lot about this pattern or knitting this and casting this on is that this cardigan is a steaked cardigan so this will be my first steaking opportunity and it is also knit from the bottom up and I have never knit a garment with that construction before. So I'm really interested to see how that feels to sort of start at the um, bottom, bottom, I've lost the word, hem. <laughs> to start at the bottom hem and work my way up. And then I believe the sleeves are actually started from the cuffs and worked up and then everything's joined in the round and it's finished off um, there. And then once every, all the knitting is completed, for the body um we steak here and i believe this is all picked up the button band is all picked up and knit after all of that as well so i'm super excited to try some new techniques uh, it is so fun to mix things up and i'm very excited to work with this non-superwash yarn i have done a swatch 
I did not meet gauge, uh, so I had to size down two needle sizes. This is written, I think, for a 4.5 millimeter. 4.5 millimeter for the color work pattern and four millimeter needle for the stockinette stitch. So I tried on the four millimeter. Actually, no, I didn't even bother doing that. I know I'm pretty loose. So I, my first swatch wasn't a 3.75 millimeter or a US 5. I did not meet gauge, so I went down to a 3.5 millimeter or a US 4. And I'm pretty much there. I'm half a stitch off. But what I've decided to do is I think I'll knit the second size in this pattern and it will turn out between the second and third size, which is probably my ideal size anyway. Uh, so I think that will work really well. And I'm so excited to wind this up. I do have one skein already wound up that I did the swatch for, but I'm going to need my contrast colors pretty soon because I keep flicking back and forth, I'm sorry, because obviously there's some color work here from the bottom and I'm also going to make a decision about which order I put them in. The pattern says to pick the darkest of the contrast colors first, which would be this one. So it would fade that way. But I am considering maybe fading it the opposite way. So that like in this pattern, you see that the contrast is really strong at the bottom and then it fades into the body. And so this is the lightest contrast or the lowest contrast yarn at the top. And these are like a flower design. And I think this pinkier tone, which in this light looks brown, but it is a more sort of, it's a roseed dust. So it does have a brown undertone to it. But I think that will look really nice in that top flower area and it will fade really nicely into the top of that cardigan. So yeah, that is sort of the thinking I am going with at the moment, but we'll see once I cast on what I decide. on is done for the second time. <laughs> I um, am doing a tubular cast on for this project and I realized as I went to do my first setup round that I had not quite followed the instructions of the tutorial that was linked in the pattern properly and my first stitch kept undoing itself. So I watched the tutorial again and made sure my muscle memory wasn't taking over. <laughs> and I think it's working better this time. We shall see. There are moments where I feel like I zoned out and I'm hoping I didn't do something weird on some of the knit stitches, but it looks okay. So I guess I'm going to try to do the setup rounds again and we'll see how we go. Hopefully it's all right. Now I just wanted to sort of talk about these little markers here. I've got a marker every 20 um, stitches. These are by an amazing local, well, Australian notions maker called Mavis Handmade. And this is their logo. If you're in Australia and you're after some notions, amazing, amazing products. I actually found a few others as I was looking for those as well that I've purchased from them before. So I have these little make one left, make one right markers. And I also have a little guide on how to make up, make one left and make one right. They are really cool too, in case you do get stuck and you, you need that reminder. These are great little reminders. So 
Mavis, Mavis Castle Main, I'm pretty sure they have a website or an Etsy shop. I'll make sure to link them down below um, so that you can check out their products or see when they'll be next at a market. They do markets throughout Victoria and they come to South Australia for Fibre Feast in March, the last two years. That's where I've picked these up before. So yes, they are great. I highly recommend them. And these ones specifically mark every 20 stitches. Yep, so you've got 100, 120, and so on and so forth. So yeah, cast on done. Let's see if I can get at least the setup rounds done tonight. We've just had dinner. Um, it's It's gotten quite late now. It is after 8 p.m. We had a very late dinner. I was so determined to get this on the needles and get it started. Uh, but it just meant it's blown the day out a little bit. But yeah, my aim now is to try to get a little bit of, well, at least the setup rounds and get that uh, main color in there as well. And then I'll probably have a shower and maybe knit on something else. Although I tend to find once I start something like this, I really want to see the progress and make sure things are working. So I'll probably hyper fixate on this for a while now. We'll see. Join me and see, <laughs> keep watching. <laughs> Let's see how I progress with this. Now I won't check in with you again today. I feel like I've checked in with you quite a lot today, actually. Uh, and tomorrow is Sunday. So I will chat with you again then. During the week, there may not be a lot of chatting. I'm at work most of the week and in the evenings, um, a dinner and evening routines, but we'll see how we go. So yeah, I hope you're enjoying what you're knitting on and I'll check in with you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>has just come out phenomenal it is so lovely and warm but I thought I'd quickly check in with you just to talk about some of the things I've been making now I've spent a little bit of time knitting on one of my obsessions this morning that I would have shown you some clips of 
and that is the Arbor Raglan by Molly Conrad of White Owl Crochet Co. I talked about it at length in my latest podcast episode, but I have made quite a bit of progress since then and I'm so excited about it. I think it's time for another try on because I have split for the sleeves. Let me show you from the front. I've split for the sleeves and I'm working on the body now. And this knit is just bringing me so much joy. I love working on this. I ended up putting some stitch markers every second repeat of the lace pattern. Oh, that's the back of it. Uh, of the lace pattern, just so I don't have to concentrate too much, to be honest. And I know that if I run out of stitches or I have an extra stitch left over while I'm working the current row, well, I catch it within two repeats. So that's been a game changer. I didn't really do that for the yoke before I split for the sleeves, mainly because I felt like I had good guides with the actual raglan increases to guide me where I was at. And obviously there were possibly fewer stitches on the needles initially as well. So, or in each section that is. But now that I'm going all the way around in the stitch pattern, um, that's just been a really, big time saver and I'm just in such a good rhythm of working on this I've made quite a bit of progress today and I did show this before I think but basically from this marker here this uh, progress keeper here is from Ash and Eve Ash and Eve designs uh, it came with my advent I think from a few years ago from them when they collaborated with whatnot so yeah, I've made a bit of progress there. Oh, and my other progress keeper is a little tiny teddy. And I picked this up at Skein Machine, which is a new yarn store that opened up in Adelaide a couple of weeks ago, and they make these in-house, so I couldn't resist. These were one of my favorite snacks when I was a kid. <laughs> so, <laughs> had to get a chocolate tiny teddy. He's a bit bigger, I think, than actual tiny teddies, but maybe not. I'd have to buy some to compare, but he's adorable, he's so cute. Hopefully the audio out here is okay, I can just hear some freeway traffic. Usually it's very serene here. Occasionally you get people who like to uh, drive their very loud motor vehicles up the freeway. So yeah, been working on that today. And last night, or actually the other thing I've been working on today that I've shown you some snippets of, of, are some socks I actually really want to finish today. So I tried to get a few rows in while I was making pancakes this morning. And I think I did, I think I got about six or eight rows, rounds in on this sock. And so these are socks that I'm knitting for my son. And this is the second of the socks. The first sock is at the toe I showed this on my podcast too, but let's just recap in case you missed that. Oh, everything's connected. So the first sock is pretty much at the toe and the second sock's pretty much there now too. They're really not far apart. And I am hoping to finish those today. Now, the reason I want to finish those is twofold. It is my son's birthday on Saturday next week and he actually is going away for the weekend. So he won't be here for his birthday and I'd like to give them to him before he leaves. So I'd like to get them done for that reason. And also they are a second sample of the pattern that I'm trying to write up. I say trying because I'm well in progress of writing this pattern up, but I just want to knit all the things. I need to get the computer out and actually finish writing that and get it tech edited so it can get test knit and it will be released in the world and uh, that will make me very happy. So yeah, that is my current sock that I'm working on today. There is another sock project that I'll, sh I'll share with you during the week as well. I won't be working on that one today, but that one is very fun as well. So keep, keep, um, keep watching, <laughs> it will reveal itself. And then the last thing that I wanted to talk about was my cast on from last night. So I cast on the Alma cardigan last night and it starts with a tubular, Italian tubular cast on. It keeps wanting to look at my face instead of the work. 
Yeah, so I am now doing a corrugated rib. So this is the contrast color, this is the main color. And so I started this last night and I actually started it a number of times. I had an evening with it. So I uh, cast on the first time. The tutorial I usually use is Andrew Maori's. And I love that tutorial, it's very clear, it's very wonderful. I used it for my Arbor Raglan and no dramas at all. Perfectly, worked out perfectly. Uh, but slightly different technique, I think, because my, well, it was just not feeling right. So I looked at the tutorial that's included in the pattern and I can't remember who that's by now, but I will link it down below. I'm pretty sure it's a standard YouTube video. Um, and I followed those instructions instead. So that was the second time I cast on. And then I had done the setup rounds after I spoke with you and I went to change needles for to start the corrugated ribbing because that called to change to the next needle size. And I realized I had cast on that second time with the wrong needles. Is that the only two times that I did it? I feel like I did it three times. There might have been a third time. I can't remember. I was up very late last night working on this because I just wanted to get it started. And I'm keen to work on this today. I would like to get the ribbing done today. Uh, I think it calls for maybe one and a half inches, maybe two inches of ribbing. I can't remember what the pattern states now. Uh, so yeah, I'd like to get the ribbing done today and then I'll feel like uh, during the week I can hopefully start on the actual body. I would also like to put it on, try it on tubing once I get some more of the ribbing done and actually see if this is the right size. Now I said last night that I would do the size two, but I did a bunch of maths looking at my gauge and looking at the stitch counts for each of the sizes that I sort of range between. So I sort of range between the two and the four, <laughs> kind of, depending on how much positive ease I want. And I decided to cast on the size three. Is that right? Yeah, I think I cast on the size three, which should give me something between the three and four. I think that's right. So I'm not quite a four, but I'm a bit bigger than the three. <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. It does, obviously it's bunched up here. I think this is a 32 inch cable maybe ish i can't remember uh yeah it looks bunched up here but yeah it'll be interesting once i get some more of this ribbing done i will actually put it on some try it on tubing and uh pop it around my um bust area probably even though this is the hem i think i forgot that word yesterday too this is the hem, so I could just put it around my hips to see sort of where that will sit. Although I think it sits a little bit above the hips if I follow pattern. Looking forward to working on this and trying it out. So they're the three projects that are active today. Now I do have a few others on the needles that I'll be working through, working on throughout the week, and I will share those with you. But right now I'm going to enjoy a bit of a coffee out on the patio and work on maybe the sock. I'll see. Do need to get those socks done though. I've, oh, I've got a hat that I'm working for him as well. I need to get that done. I'll show you that later. I've just realized that I keep forgetting to tell you what I'm wearing. I've worn knitwear both of these days and I haven't shared what those are yet. So today I'm wearing the Felix pullover. This is a pattern by Amy Christopher's. It has beautiful, I should have put it back on the tripod, beautiful raglan increased detail along, well, along the raglan. <laughs> and um, I absolutely adore this sweater. I knit this in some old knit crate stash that I had. Uh, it's a blown yarn, so it's like a tube, a hollow, hollow tube, a stuffed tube. I can't think of the words right now, but it's a blown yarn and it is really super light. This pattern is written for a worsted gauge, but I ended up using a very plump sport for this and it's worked out beautiful, beautifully. I cannot remember which size I knit now, so I'll pop the details of this project in the description below so that you can have a look at all of the details if you wish, but I highly recommend it. It's just a really nice pattern. It's a beautiful finished object, very 
um, versatile. I love wearing this one. And yesterday I wore my Radvent cardigan. Now my Radvent cardigan has been one of my favorite makes of this year. It's got a different construction. Actually, I've made so many, I've made a few sweaters this year. So I can't really say it's one of my favorites because they've all had, they've all been very unique. So this one was very fun though. So it's um, knit on the bias. So you knit it from sleeve to sleeve, which is hard for me to show while I'm holding the camera. You knit it from sleeve to sleeve um well sleeve to the middle then the other sleeve to the middle and then you kitchen a stitch to join them and i just found that process so fun and so unique so i love that cardigan i love the colors of that cardigan that was knit in uh, louis and lola advent from 2023 i have purchased the 2024 louis and lola advent too and i am so excited to see what this year will bring and I need to still decide what I will make with it. Karina's colors are always so amazing and so wearable and so cohesive. Uh, that's actually what I'm knitting. I don't think I've mentioned, I did mention yesterday. I'm knitting this um, Alma cardigan in Louis and Lola yarn as well. Absolutely adore Karina's colors, amazing. So yeah, that's what I've been wearing so far. And I've also been wearing hand knit socks because it is winter here. Even though the sun is out today, it is still winter. Um, says it's 15 degrees Celsius though. So it's a beautifully mild day actually. There's no wind, very little wind. There's a little breeze, but it's nice. So yeah, thought I'd share that with you as well. Now I'm going to do some knitting and maybe watch a podcast. And then I might go for a drive and pick up a new basket from, um, Zambezi Crafts. If you've been following me for a while, you'll know that I'm a little bit obsessed with their baskets. They're made in Ghana and they are beautiful and so versatile. I'm just finding as I'm moving around the house with all my projects and I want to have more than one on hand at a time, I would really like another basket because all the baskets I have are full of either yarn or abandoned whips or project bags. So another basket, of course, that's the solution. Don't clean out the ones that I have. Just me. <laughs> okay, I'll check in with you again, maybe later today uh, to have a chat, but I'll see if I can capture some uh, of the actual making when I stop talking. Take care. Oh, we can spend our day in bed. Your favorite music on all the way baritone Shut the lights, go in front We can spend all day in bed I thought I'd do a fit check on my arbor And I'm really happy with it I think I'm going to have around four four and a half inches of positive ease, which will be perfect. I think the pattern was written for around five-ish. I can't remember now. And yeah, I'm really happy with how it's going to fit. Going to keep going on the body. Not tonight though. <laughs> I will work on either my second sock or I'll pick up the Alma cardigan again. Wow. But that's brilliant. I'm so happy with that. I am really happy with my modifications. It is working out exactly how I had hoped it would. Fantastic. Okay, time to go and knit some more. <laughs> I'll put your favorite music on all the way baritone. Shut the lights, go in for red. Oh, we can spend all day in bed. Marathon, Kenny 
saxophone We'll order in a bunch of food I'll put your favorite music on All the way baritone Shut the lights, go in front Hello friends, it's Monday lunchtime. I am at work, well I'm in my car, but <laughs> I am at work having my lunch break at the moment in my car and I am knitting on an amazing sock project that I am test knitting for my friend Kath of Mindful Melbourne Maker and I'm loving this one. Isn't it beautiful? This is the second sock. I have already finished one whole sock. I talked about this on my latest podcast, but um, the test knit I think is due on f Sunday. I was gonna say Friday, but I think it's Sunday. And we only needed to finish one sock for the test, but I would ideally like to get them both off the needles. I just feel like I've got a lot of whips at the moment calling my name and it would be nice to just tick another one off. And this first sock flew off my needles. So I'm expecting the second sock to do the same. <laughs> so I'm knitting this in um, some stash yarn, which is amazing. Uh, this is What Not. And the colorway is called Toffee Apple for the main color. And the cuff is uh, from Ash and Oak Designs who is no longer dying and I can't remember what that colour was called but I did talk about it in my podcast. So yeah, I've just finished eating my lunch and I thought I'd sit in the car for a little bit and get a few rows in on this beautiful sock and try to get through the rest of the work day. The day started off really quite crazy. I uh, made sure I packed the car, packed my lunch we drove out, I hit the freeway and realized I'd forgotten my work laptop at home. So we had to turn around. So it just felt like a very Monday-y Monday. <laughs> but that's okay. We're halfway through the day now and it's fine. The work day is going quite fast. There's a lot to do. So that's always nice when it goes quickly. Not so much when there's a lot to do. <laughs> But um, yeah, the day is going quickly. The other thing I wanted to talk about quickly before I do sign off and just get a few rows done before I have to head back upstairs is what I'm wearing today. I am wearing my Pebble Beach shawl today. This is an amazing one skein project. I knit this in some beautiful yarn that was sent to me by a dear friend, Krista of The Knitting Dentist. Um, and I love this shawl so much. This Pebble Beach shawl is by Chris, uh, Helen Stewart, Curious Handmade, I believe. She writes the pattern in, I think, two different sizes. So there's the one skein version, and then I think there's a two skein version as well in the one pattern. And I knit the one skein one, and it's just such a great size and shape. So today is chilly, like it's not a warm day. It says it's 18 degrees Celsius out there, but there's a bit of a wind chill factor and it does not feel that warm. It's cloudy, dreary. It just looks a little bit miserable out there. But uh, this is just a nice little accessory, extra layering piece. Keeps my neck a little bit warmer because this cardigan does go down a little bit. And yeah, I cannot remember what the colorway of this yarn was. This was old older um, stash well it wasn't stash I knit this quite a few years ago now um, I've actually pulled it out of stash really quickly <laughs> and knit it up almost as soon as I got it from memory I really did enjoy working with this yarn and it's by I think Woolberry Fiber Co I think that's who it was by I'll link the project page down below anyway but if you're looking for a one skein shawl pattern this is beautiful it just has some eyelets I don't know if that's going to oh yeah it focuses it's just got some eyelets throughout and yeah it was a really fun knit i don't remember it taking too long i remember actually knitting it on my lunch breaks at work quite often but in warmer months because i'm pretty sure i spent those lunch breaks in the botanic gardens not in my car <laughs> but yeah thought i'd quickly check in say hello 
and I might check in with you again later. We'll see how the evening goes. I'm conscious of this vlog becoming very long because I seem to be a bit chatty and I've lost my stitch gout. I'm on the patterned row <laughs> of this sock. Uh, so yeah, I, I feel like I've been very chatty. So this might end up being much longer than I expect it to, expected it to be, but that's okay. It is what it is, but I'm mindful of not boring you all. So yeah, I will check in with you again potentially later. If I don't check in with you, I'll show you some footage of the evening um, and what I decide to knit on tonight. And yeah, I hope you're enjoying your, your projects. I hope you're working on something you love. Tell me in the comments below what you're working on this week. I'd love to know what you're working on. Uh, there's so many things to knit and there's so little time. <laughs> But yeah, hope you're loving what you're working on too. I have 10 minutes. Wow, that went fast. I have 10 minutes of knitting time and then I'm heading back up to the office. I'm hoping you're having a great Monday. You won't see this till next week sometime. But whenever you do see this, I hope your Monday was good. <laughs> Take care. Tuesday. I'm in my car on my lunch break again today and I'm knitting on a hat for my son. So this is the Muscleborough hat. It is a pattern by Yasolda Teague and it's really coming along. It's got a little bit of pulling but that's okay. I weighed my leftover yarn today and I have, or this morning I had around 44 grams left. And I've just knit probably five rounds or so. And I still have quite a little bit of yarn left. This is an 150 gram ball, or it was. And it's a DK weight yarn. It's in West Yorkshire Spinners. And it's the DK so Colour Sock Lab, I believe, in the Colourway Rock. And I'm knitting a Muscleborough hat for my son and I would like to get it done before his birthday, which is on Saturday. But ideally, I'd like to gift it to him before he goes away with his friends for his birthday on Friday. So I want to give it to him Thursday night. If I focus on this over the next couple of days, I might be able to get it done in time. I just think he will enjoy having it while they're away camping. And, uh, yeah, it feels like it's massive. I think I'm making the adult large. I can't remember which size I ended up choosing. This is a fun pattern in that you get to choose the size once you do your gauge swatch. And your gauge swatch is basically the cast on area here. And my only concern with that is that I know that my tension is tighter when I'm on the small circumference versus when I move to the 16 inch circular. So I do the 
cast on and the increase rounds. I did these ones on my Addy Trios in a 3.25 millimeter size. Once there were enough stitches, I transferred them onto a 16 inch circular, which is actually also an Addy needle. Someone's just walking past. And it's an Addy fixed circular in 16 inch. So yeah, we'll see how it fits. I based it on the hat that I gave him that I knit up last year in terms of the sizing. I really can't remember what size I'm knitting though. I hopefully put it on my project page. So I'll link that down below as well. So let's see if I can get this done by Thursday afternoon. I plan to knit on this on my lunch breaks for the rest of well the next two days. Although I'm working from home tomorrow, so I'm not sure that that will work. And cars driving past. But I think I can do it. I knit the last one in a couple of days, so granted it was a long weekend and we were camping at the time. Whereas I'm at work all day at the moment. And then cooking dinner when I get home and sorting out chickens and doing all of the adult responsibilities. <laughs> I will aim to get this done by Thursday night. It'll be another finished object off my needles, so that will be exciting too. But I don't hold grudge. You had to go. I will save you a space for. Trout and hummingbird wings. 
friends. It's been a couple of days since I've chatted with you. It has been a couple of very busy days. Today's the first day I am actually having a proper lunch break again. So I uh, thought I'd check in quickly and let you know that this is the last day of this week of making. So I feel like it's been a great week. It's been such an inspiring week of making this week and I feel like I've gotten a lot done. I have finished two objects this week. So I finished my son's socks and I finished his hat last night and I gifted it to him and he loved it. He decided not to take it with him on his trip. Uh, so I will wash and block that tonight or over the weekend. Um, and yeah, I'm so happy with how that turned out. I tried it on at my mum and dad's house last night and I didn't want to take it off. I'm going to have to knit one for myself in a similar weight of yarn, I think. I have a fingering weight one at home and I do enjoy wearing that. It's probably not my colour palette, so I don't reach for it as much, but I bought yarn in Bendigo for a muscle borough hat or for, for a hat. And I think it might end up being the muscle borough. That's probably not the right weight but I'll have a think about that. Maybe I'll find something else in my stash. But yeah, very enjoyable knit. I'll make sure the project pages are listed down below. So I'm going to head back up to the office shortly. I will check in with you one more time because I still want to announce the winners of the Use Your Sock Yarn Mail. I have all the data ready to go. I just need to use my random number comment picker or post picker random number generator to <laughs> draw the winners. Uh, there'll be some winners for both uh, pattern prizes and some physical prizes too. So I'm super excited to share that with you. And yeah, I'm going to head back to work for the rest of the day. I have about four hours of the work day left and then it's the weekend. <sighs> I'll check in with you again soon. been a great week. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been so fun to be able to share these little snippets with you this week. And before I sign off, I will pop up on the screen the winners of the Use Your Sock Yarn Mail. I will pop some winners up from Ravelry, from the comments section. These winners will win a pattern prize of their choice. So I'll need you to email me and send me your Ravelry ID. You can send the email to fiberboundpodcast at gmail.com. I'll pop it on the screen. It will also be linked in the description box below. And I've also drawn some winners from the Instagram hashtag. So that's really exciting. There's a few winners there as well and I will pop them on the screen too. So if you'll see your name there, congratulations. You have also won a pattern prize of your choice. And I also have two physical prizes to give away today to the people that were able to finish a project within a calendar month. Now I'll show you the prizes first. These are all donations that I've been given over the last couple of years, I guess. Um, so they're all from very generous makers that I have had the pleasure of either meeting online and some of whom I've met face to face and one I have collaborated with. So that's been a lot of fun. So the first prize is this lovely package. We have yarn by Finch Yarns in the colorway Candy Lane. This is an 85% extra fine merino, 15% nylon. 400 meters to 100 grams. And the project bag that I've paired with this, I thought they looked quite nice together, is one that was donated by the Knitting Den Shop. So this is Krista, she runs the Knitting Den Shop. The shop is closed at this point in time, but I will still link her Instagram down below. Um, so there's a logo here. Krista is a dentist, hence the little tooth, which is adorable and her bags are just absolutely stunning. A part of me really wanted to keep this one for myself because it's so pretty, uh, but this was donated as a giveaway, as was this yarn from my friend Lavinica, who is one of the dyes of Finch Yarns. So that's the first physical prize. And the second physical prize I have put together for you all. Oh, I also forgot, both of these will also have a little tin of my favorite progress keepers and stitch markers. They have some rose gold stitch markers inside. 
and I love these. These are my favorite. I have one of these little tins in each of my project bags and I absolutely adore these. So I have uh, included one each into the physical prize for the winners there. So that's in both parcels. And then the second parcel is from my collaboration with Hobby. So this was donated by Hobby. It's the Silly Socks by Hobby, and they are a really fun yarn. I did knit, knit up ex this exact colorway a couple of years ago, and I really loved it. There's a colorway number on the label, so I don't quite remember the name. The colorway is 07. This is a 75% wool, 25% polyamide, 400 meters or 437 yards per 100 grams. It's a beautiful sock yarn. The color is gorgeous. It's really lovely to knit up. So there's that. And then there's also this little drawstring project bag where you can use it to store your yarn. It's up to you what you do with it. It says wool is cool, which of course it is. So this is the other prize package. So I've just drawn the lucky winners. And the first winner is Miriam Fortin. Miriam used her 2023 Advent skein from the Cozy Knitter to knit some beautiful self-striping socks and that was the winning entry that um, was selected for this first prize. And the second winner is Hannah Black. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, I'm so sorry. I'm, it's either Hannah or Hannah. Our lovely Hannah is located in Denmark. Hannah knit a beautiful lace pair of socks called the Prom Queen Socks by KF Jones in a beautiful pale pink colorway that just has my heart. So it's really fun to see the patterns that are being chosen to knit as part of this knit along as well. And um, I'm so excited that I've been able to finally draw these prizes and I can't wait to hear from all of the winners so I can get your preferred preferred prizes to you. So just a reminder again, the Ravelry and the Instagram prize winners will win a pattern of their choice up to the value of $10 US, which I think is $15 Australian. And you will just need to make sure you send me your Ravelry ID together with the link to the pattern that you would like me to gift to you. And obviously the physical prize winners, please send me your address details so I can ship that out to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching today. It's been so fun to record this past week for you and to share uh, my making and my inspiration and life, a little bit of life sprinkled in there as well. So I thank you so much. If you've enjoyed this kind of content, please consider liking and subscribing. I will try to check in with you all again in a couple of weeks, probably. I'll do a full format episode at that point. And I hope that you're enjoying every stitch that you're knitting right now and you're getting a lot of fulfillment out of that. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Take care. Bye.